So a lot of you in my previous video said that this new VTuber thing that I'm trying to do here is kind of annoying and distracting. The USA, if you don't stop this propaganda of hate against my new look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find an elderly member of your family, I'm gonna infect their computer with fake viruses, and then I'm gonna pretend to be a Microsoft support staff. I'm gonna fix this fake virus situation, and once I'm done, I'm gonna ask for $2,000 in payment as Google Play cards. And I think my accent is proof enough for you to know that I'm not kidding around. Do not piss me off. Do not piss me off. Now that we've got that friendly message out of the way, let's start the video. Also, I think a more appropriate look for this video should be... This, right? Cause, right? You get it. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go. Come. One, two, three, go. So a few weeks back, I made a video talking about the new hair system in Blender 3.3 and a lot of people wanted to know how I made these particle based hair systems for some of the animals. So let's not waste any more time and just get going. Okay, let's quickly look at the fundamentals of the particle based hair system before I actually show you how I made the final scenes. If you've never touched the particle based hair system before, or maybe you've been intimidated by it as a beginner, let me seriously simplify everything down for you. To get started, you select the object you want to add the hair onto, then go to the Particle Properties tab, click on a little plus icon and change the type from emitter to hair. The hair by default is going to be really long, so you slide down the hair length to something reasonable. Just above that slider is the field for number of particles. You increase that number to increase the number of hair. Seed just randomizes the distribution of the hair and segments determines the number of points on each hair strand. You need to go into the particle edit mode to actually see these segments. Just change the selection mode from path edit mode to point select mode. Higher the number of segments, better the control is going to be on each section of the hair particle when you comb them. We'll get back to the particle edit mode later. For now, just know that you shouldn't go overboard with this segment field. A value between 4 to 6 is going to be sufficient for most users. Let's ignore the source dropdown for now, because we're just focusing on the bare minimum required to get a quick yet good looking result. But trust me, I'm not obscuring anything important, especially if you're a beginner. So we're going to just skip all the unnecessary options. That being said, let's also ignore the hair dynamics drop down because that's a little bit time taking and a bit advanced as well. But I hope you're not assuming that I don't know how these options work because I know exactly how they work, okay? The options are advanced for you, not for me because I'm not a loser beginner like you, right? So I know exactly how they work. I'm just trying to protect you from all the unnecessary information. So yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's look at the render and viewport display dropdown now. Getting the material slot out of the way, because it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a drop-down list of all the materials associated with the object. So you just make a particular material for the hair and just select it from this drop-down. We'll cover more advanced hair materials later in the video, so stick around for that. Let's cover the other basic options for now. Like the path steps option under the path panel and the strand steps option under the viewport display panel. Did the exact same thing as a subdivision surface modifier. One field is for the viewport and one field is for the final render. It does the same thing as well. It just adds more subdivisions or steps to the hair strand. Again, I wouldn't recommend you go crazy with this. Stay around the range of four to six for normal use cases. Also, there's a B spline checkbox just above the render path step option, which I'd recommend you turn it on. It just evens out any sharp edges in the hair curve. Now, before we get to the children hair settings, which is the most important setting of all, let's quickly cover the hair shape dropdown. Here, you just gotta focus on the diameter root and tip sliders. The diameter root field determines the diameter of the root of each hair strand. Similarly, the root slider determines the diameter of the tip of each hair strand. But I wouldn't suggest changing it, because usually hair strands decrease in width as we reach the top. So zero meter kind of makes sense. But yeah, that's it. These are the options I use most to give an initial shape to the hair. But now let's get to the meat of the thing. The options that are going to change the game for you. Let's get to them now. It's gonna make your hair look so good that even my mustache is gonna look ugly in front of it. I think I took it way too far. I shouldn't be raising your expectations like that because it's obviously not gonna look as good as my mustache because that's kind of impossible. Shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's do this. Let's try to get 
as close as possible to it okay as close as possible to it let's do that let's do that wake up bitch okay so obviously when you have to duplicate identical objects in blender you don't use the shift d shortcut to do it right because it's gonna load each new duplicate into memory which is not ideal at all so instead what we use is the alt d shortcut because that's way more efficient so the same logic applies to the hair particles as well we've defined an initial number of hair particles we want but that's really gonna be enough and it's not suggested to just keep increasing this number to increase the volume of your hair spread because that's just way too memory intensive so what we instead use is the interpolated child particles option in the children drop down. I think its definition is perfectly explained in the blender manual itself. Children are emitted between the parent particles on the faces of a mesh. They interpolate between adjacent parents. And if you don't know what interpolate means, which I didn't either, it means to insert something of a different nature into something else. So yeah, children hair particles are inserted in between these initially created parent hair particles for you and thus they consume a lot less memory. And hair particles are really heavy on your computer. So it's really important that you use your resources efficiently. So what I would recommend is you keep the initial number under the emission panel at around 1000 to 2000 and then keep the display or render amount under the children panel at around 100 to 200 because that's going to be more than enough for most use cases. Also there's another option called simple just beside interpolated. That option is just for weirdos and psychopaths or people who really know what they're doing which is definitely not us. So we're gonna skip past it. Subscribe for more thorough and in-detail tutorials just like this. Moving just down onto the length and threshold sliders. These are pretty self-explanatory again. You vary the length of each hair strand using the length slider, but it changes the length of all the hair particles. And we don't want that because that looks way too uniform. So you add a threshold value to it. That will define a limit on what amount of hair is affected by this length slider. So you can add a tiny bit of length variation using these two options. Pretty handy, I think, to break the monotony of the hair particle super quickly. Also, don't confuse this length slider with the initial length slider under the emission panel. This is obviously the global length value of the hair, and this children particle length slider cannot go above this global value when set to 1. So you can only go below it using this slider. Now, these are just the basics of the interpolated children hair particles, but it's obviously not just limited to saving some memory and adding just a few length variations, of course. Activating this option unlocks a bunch of other sliders that really don't exist with the default particle hair setup. So let's look at them one by one. Starting with parting and clumping. Both of them pretty insignificant, to be honest. But let's cover them anyway. Parting, I have no idea what it does. You define a min and a max value, and then there's this parting slider that just bends the hair particles a little bit. I don't know, I've never used it successfully. And then there's also the clumping panel that just clumps either the root or the tip of each children particle to the closest parent particle together. This might be useful to create clumped effects like this. And both these effects can be replicated in the particle edit mode and with much more freedom. So I've never found myself using them here. But again, this is not what I was talking about when I said interpolated children particles unlocks really important features. What I was actually talking about was the roughness panel and the kink panel. The king panel. What does king actually mean? Does it not mean what I think it means? Oh. So it means exactly what it's supposed to mean. It's just my dirty mind that's been polluted by the internet. Apologies for that. And I think I've gone on enough tangents at this point as well. So now let's really get to the meat of it the meat of the meat of it. Yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> okay, so the roughness panel. It has three main sections. I think you can see how they've been subtly separated in the UI. Let's look at what the uniform section does first. If you look closely, you'll see it adds a bit of noise in each hair strand based on the number of steps you would have entered previously. If you have two steps, 
the uniformity of the strands is affected based on that low number. You increase it to something like six and the noise occurs at multiple points in the head curve. And the size slider just below it increases the size of the noise texture for the roughness you're adding, exactly like how you see in the shader nodes. Now let's go to the next section, which is the endpoint roughness section. All the endpoint slider does is it drags the tip or the endpoint of each hair strand into this nice crisscross pattern. And then this shape slider just gives this noise a very obvious graph driven shape, if you look closely. The last section, which is the random roughness section, adds some really nice random roughness to the hair. I call it the pubic hair roughness slider. Cause I think that I think it's I think that name is pretty pretty self-explanatory. It also has a size slider to define the size of the noise texture and a threshold slider to define what percentage of hair is affected by this random roughness. I'd recommend you always keep this value above zero so that even the noise doesn't look too uniform because uniformity even in the roughness can get pretty recognizable. So yeah, threshold is a really useful slider. Always use it when adding some noise. Now let's get to the king. king. Panel. The king. king. Panel. This, as we read in the definition, has a bunch of presets for different hair types. Like as you can see, curl, wave, braid, etc. I only found myself using the curl and the wave preset. So let me use them to show you the most important sliders associated with them. Which is really not that many. I just use the amplitude slider to decrease the, uh, the amplitude of the curl. And the last two sliders, that is frequency and shape, just control the overall shape of the curve. And that's it. So I can try and explain all the mathematics behind it as if I understand it either. <laughs> but we are here to get quick and efficient results. So let's stay focused. Amplitude, frequency, and shape. And that's all. Just keep that in mind. And also, that's all you're gonna need to add procedural roughness to your hair particles. You can experiment with every slider you see, because that's how I learned it all. So definitely go do that for sure. But the sliders I mentioned were the options I often found myself using. So if you want to save some time and effort, just keep a note of them. But I think that covers the interpolated children hair particle settings. And also, this is something worth mentioning. It doesn't matter if you need 10 hair particles or 1000 hair particles in your scene. Make sure you turn on the children interpolation thing. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on these roughness options that only appear when you turn this option on. I know it's weird, but that's how it is. So say you just need to add 5 hair particles onto something. I would say you add one in the initial number field and then add one in the interpolated children hair field. And that way you still have access to all the important options. That's the way to do it. Trust me. Now there's two more important concepts left to cover. So let's quickly go over them. First is how to control the spread of the hair on the object. Because when you initially add the hair system, it's going to add hair everywhere, which is not what we want. So we use weight paints to control where the hair goes. To do that, you go to the object data properties tab and go to the vertex group panel and click on the tiny plus icon to add a new vertex group. Then change the object mode to weight paint mode and just paint wherever you want the hair to be. Red means more hair density and blue means less hair density. And green means somewhere in between them. So get done with the weight painting and just copy the name of the vertex group and put it in the density field of the vertex group panel. You can also put it in the length field, which means the weight paint will also affect the length of the hair. Another great way to break the uniformity of the hair spread. Also, I'd recommend you turn off the visibility of the hair system when weight painting because there's a high possibility that Blender might crash because this live painting thing can get kind of heavy on the computer. So keep that in mind. Now let's quickly cover the particle edit mode. You can enter into it by switching from the object mode to the particle edit mode here. At first, it might look a bit confusing. I'd again suggest that you change the display mode to point select mode so it makes a little more sense. Now if you select the comb brush from this panel, you can comb the parent hair particles. But right now, we're just able to see the parent hair particles. If in case you want to see the children hair particles as well, just go into this options dropdown and enable children. I usually keep it off because my computer starts burning up if I put this much load on it, but you can keep it on if your computer can take it. Now there's a few brush options available on this left panel. Let me cover the most important ones. First, as we saw, is the comb brush. You use it to comb the hair. There are a few options associated with it just above the brush panel. First two are radius and strength, pretty self-explanatory, again. Then there's the deflect emitter checkbox. If we turn it off, you'll see the comb brush is allowed to push the hair particles into the mesh, and we definitely don't want that. So we enable it. And associated with it is the distance field just beside it. Higher you set this number, higher the distance will be between the hair particles and the mesh. 
Then comes the add brush, which can be used to add parent hair particles wherever you want them. There's just one field you gotta focus on here, which is the count field. One adds one parent hair, 10 adds 10 parent hair. Now you can use this mode to cover up bald spots in your model. But what real professionals like to do is, they set the number field to zero when initiating the particle system, and then directly come here into the particle edit mode and literally add each strand of hair themselves so they can have full control over the process. So you can try that as well. But again, we are sticking with just the basics here. So let's stay in that lane. Next, let's cover the length brush, which as the name suggests, can be used to vary the length of the hair particles. There's an option to grow hair, and then there's an option to shrink hair. This is an important brush, because you want to add as much variation in length as you can. So use it, and use it thoroughly. But rest of the brushes, I rarely use. I've heard some people use the cut brush a lot, which cuts out segments of the hair. I think the logo explains it better than anything else, but I didn't find much use for it in my project. But yeah, that's it. That's a summary of the particle edit mode as well. One last and very important thing to know, once you make edits in the particle edit mode, the emission panel and a lot of other properties will automatically be disabled. You'll have to delete this edit to enable the options again. So this process is kind of destructive in a way. So just keep that in mind. Do all the particle edit changes you want right at the end. So you're not affected by it. And I think that's the end of it. I've bored you enough with the basics. But you know, it's important to get familiarized with these options. Like you can't perform an open art surgery before you learn how to stitch your torn up underwear, right? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So we have learned how to do that. Our underwears are absolutely hole free now and we can now actually get to the open art surgery. So that's what we are gonna do. Let's get to the open art surgery. Okay, this is how I made the fur for these animals. Let's start with the giraffe. As you can see, the number is limited to 2000 and the hair length is really, really short. The number of steps is six for both the viewport and the render, and the interpolated children is set to 100 with a little bit of length variation. And just slight imperfections added through the roughness and the kink panel. And I know I'm brushing through them really fast, but don't worry. I've made all the source files available in the description below, but they are hidden under a cryptic link. So it's like a reward for you guys if you've made it to this section of the video. So take advantage of that. I know that's kind of mean and kind of assholeish to do that, but does this face look like someone who's nice? I guess not. So yeah, the link will be in the description only for people who've made it this far in the video. <laughs> Just don't do anything illegal with them because these models have been made by really talented artists, so we respect that. Okay, now let me quickly tell you how I made the material for the hair because that's also pretty simple And all you gotta do is make a new material and plug the texture that is applied on the animal into a principled hair BSDF And that's it. The hair particles will pick the color data from that texture and you're literally done Now one important tip, you gotta make multiple hair systems to make the final output look good Just one layer isn't going to cut it. For this giraffe alone, I made five different layers so spend some time and effort on it if you want it to look good. Also, I went into the particle edit mode to comb the fur down a little bit because by default it just appears as if the animal is in a constant state of goosebumps. It's always titillated by something. So you'll need to comb it down a little bit. Again, this takes some time and effort but goes a long way to sell the look of the hair. Also, here's the different weight paints for the different hair systems I made in case you wanted to have a look at them. Notice how I didn't paint the parts that are out of the camera because that will make the scene a little efficient. Okay, one common issue I often had while making these animals was the volume of the hair just looked insufficient sometimes. Meaning you can see the skin underneath the hair more than the hair itself. Even when you set the number as high as 2000 and the interpolated children hair almost to 200, which is already overkill, but still the hair spread looked kind of scarce and empty. And what finally solved this issue was increasing the diameter of the root, which made the hair thicker and thus covered more of the skin underneath. The mistake I did was I kept increasing the hair count, but it was never enough and caused Blender to crash several times. Turns out all the hair needed was some thickness, so keep that in mind. 
Let's quickly look at the other animals now. I'll just scroll through some of the particle settings again. But don't forget, the source files are still available in the description. So make use of them if this goes way too fast. Okay, use them. Let's quickly look at the other animals now. I'll just scroll through some of the particle settings again. Let's look at the goat first. You'll see it just has the roughness sliders applied to it with no kink at all. The dog head came with some viscous pre-attached to it, so that was an advantage. Otherwise, I'd have to spend some time making them. Like I did for the cow, just added some extra viscous around the nose. And I think that adds a little bit of character to the cow. Now, not all of them turned out looking good. I made a tiger and a cat and a parrot that looked absolutely shit. Mostly because of my fault, because I didn't spend enough time on each of them. So yeah, not all renders turned out good enough. Now this was a quick and easy way to make good looking hair particles. Just focus on the roughness panel and the kink panel and just add some variation using the particle edit mode. And that's it, because that's all I did. And I think most of the animals turned out pretty good, in my opinion. I'm not a hardworking artist. I like getting quick results. So you gotta trust me. And there are more advanced ways to approach hair grooming as well, especially when you have a character that has longer hair, like I had for a client project a few years back. I would seriously suggest watching this video by Anish Shots. This is the video that helped me the most when I was struggling with hair grooming. So make sure to check that video out as well. Now finally, let me just show you how I set up the whole scene. Nothing conceptual there. The lighting was literally trial and error. I placed them wherever I wanted and saw what impact it created on the animals. By the end of it, there were light sources in all the four diagonal directions. There's just this super bright light just behind the giraffe that's creating this white halo effect around the hair, which I think is a cool effect. There's also a volume cube to give the scene a little bit of atmosphere. And finally, I made a rig for the jacket to pose it into position. And did the same with most animal heads as well. Just added a few bones inside the head and bent them in a way that looked natural. Also, there's a hair particle system on the jacket as well, just to add another extra layer of detail. And finally, some color grading in Lightroom to finish it off. And that's it. A quick and easy way to make good looking hair in Blender. Let me know which model looks the best according to you. Let me know if you have any tips or maybe if I said something wrong or if you'd like to correct me because that can happen as well. So use the comment section for that. But that's it from my end. Hopefully you gained something from this tutorial. It's obviously hard to absorb everything all at once by watching a video for the first time. So what I try to do while watching tutorials is at least try to take away one thing from it. And that's it. And anything more than that is just a bonus. So try and do that. Just one thing. Focus on just one small tip or trick that you didn't know before. And that's it. That's the best that you can gain from this video. I think. Okay, I'm unnecessarily dragging this video out. It's time to go. So get out. Go make something and if you do, tag me because I would like to see what you made. That would be kind of awesome. So do that. Okay. Peace, bitch. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier here, from the chandelier here. Gonna live like tomorrow doesn't exist Like it doesn't exist I'm gonna fly like a bird through the night Feel my tears as they dry Swing from the chandelier, from the chandelier.